hi students as a part of exam preparation i have made a video to explain you all the differentiate questions comes under microbiology so we'll move on to the video there is a differentiate two differentiate questions um, which is asked in the microbiology question paper so whenever they ask differentiate you should remember that you should divide a column and you should write both the topic as a comparison okay don't write it like a paragraph so what is the difference between flagella and fimbria flagella is a long whip like filamentous structure in surface of the bacteria so it is originated from the cytoplasmic membrane so whereas fimbria is a bristle like short fibers that occur in the surface of bacteria and it originates from the cell wall so flagella originates from cytoplasmic membrane and fimbria originates from cell wall flagella has a hollow tubular structure and fimbria is a solid structure flagella is helical and non straight in nature whereas fimbria is straight and non helical in nature so comparatively flagella is thicker than fimbria whereas fimbria is comparatively thinner than the flagella so the next question is differentiate between t cell and b cell so what is t cell as a t lymphocytes and b cell as a b lymphocytes t cell matures in thymus whereas b cell gets matured in bone marrow the mature t cells occur mostly inside the lymph node whereas b cell are always present outside the lymph node microvilli is absent in the t cell whereas microvilli is present on the cell surface of b cell T cell is involved in cell mediated immunity whereas B cell is involved in humoral immunity or antibody mediated immunity the lifespan of T cell is longer than the B cell whereas B cell has a shorter lifespan the next question is differentiate between live vaccine and killed vaccine so live vaccine is a single dose administration whereas killed vaccine is a multiple dose administration live vaccine is less stable comparing to killed vaccine so killed vaccines are always more stable live vaccines creates both antibody and cell mediated immunity whereas killed vaccine gives only antibody mediated immunity live vaccine stimulates igg response whereas killed vaccine stimulates igg and iga response the examples of live vaccine are sabin's polio vaccine measles vaccine and bcg killed vaccine examples are salk polio whooping cough the next is differentiate between gram positive cell wall and gram negative cell wall sometimes they may ask what is the difference between gram positive cocci and gram negative cocci okay what is the differentiate between the cell wall of gram positive and gram negative gram positive cell wall is a single layered cell wall whereas gram negative is a double layered cell wall gram positive cell wall consists of several layers of peptidoglycan whereas gram negative cell wall consists of single layer of peptidoglycan the size of the cell wall of gram positive is 15 to 80 nanometer whereas gram negative it is 10 nanometers gram positive cell wall has a outer there is no outer membrane in gram positive cell wall whereas gram negative cell wall has a outer membrane gram positive organism or the cell wall appears purple in gram stain and gram negative cell wall appears pink in gram stain the next is immediate and delayed hypersensitivity reactions so what is the difference between immediate and delayed hypersensitivity immediate hypersensitivity reactions appears and quick subsides quickly whereas delayed hypersensitivity appears slowly and lasts longer and immediate hypersensitivity reaction is induced by antigens by any route so if it enters any route it will cause immediate hypersensitivity reaction but delayed hypersensitivity reaction usually induced by injection of the antigen 
the next is circulating antibodies are responsible for the reaction of immediate hypersensitivity whereas circulating antibodies are not responsible in case of delayed hypersensitivity reactions immediate hypersensitivity reactions are antibody mediated reactions whereas here it is cell mediated reaction positive transfer through possible serum is possible in immediate hypersensitivity whereas positive passive transfer cannot be possible in delayed hypersensitivity so passive transfer through the serum is not possible in de delayed hypersensitivity and it is possible in immediate hypersensitivity desensitization easy but does not last long whereas here in delayed hypersensitivity desensitization is difficult but last long the immune the hypersensitivity reaction long last is a long lasting the next is difference between exotoxins and endotoxins these are all ex exotoxins are excreted by organisms of living cell whereas endotoxins are a integral part of the cell wall exotoxins are present both in gram positive and gram negative bacteria whereas endotoxins are mostly present in gram negative bacteria it is a polypeptide relatively unstable and heat labile the exotoxins whereas endotoxins are relatively stable and heat tolerant exotoxins are highly antigenic whereas endotoxins are weakly immunogenic the diseases caused by exotoxins are tetanus diphtheria and botulism whereas endotoxins causes meningococcemia sepsis by gram negative rods so these are all the difference between exotoxins and endotoxins the next is active and passive immunity this i have clearly explained in my one of my video that is antigen antibody and what is active immunity it is produced due to contact with the pathogen of antigen whereas passive immunity it is produced due to antibodies obtained directly active immunity lasts for a longer time whereas passive immunity lasts for only few days in active immunity antibodies are produced by the body against the antigen whereas here in passive immunity antibodies are obtained from the other sources or from the other species active immunity is not immediate whereas here immediate development of immunity happens in the passive immunity there are no or little side effects in active immunity whereas there is possibility of hypersensitivity reactions in the passive immunity person is exposed to the agent in active immunity whereas in the passive immunity the person is not exposed to the agent but given with the antibodies the next is difference between igm and igg this also i have discussed in my in my immunity video igg is monomer structured long lasting immunoglobulin whereas igm is pentamer structured temporary immunoglobulin igg is produced during later stage of immune response igm is produced during the early stage of immune response igg is smaller in size whereas igm is larger in size igg cross the placental barrier igm is not able to cross the placental barrier igg found in all body fluids whereas igm is found only in blood and lymph igg is the most abundant type of immunoglobulin whereas that is offer a 90% of the immunoglobulin is igg whereas in igm it is less abundant comparing to the igg the next is difference between injectable polio and oral polio injectable polio is developed by salk jonas whereas oral polio is developed by sabin albert sabin so inoculation of dead polio vaccine happens in the injectable polio whereas in oral polio inoculation of live polio vaccine so oral polio is a live vaccine injectable polio is a killed vaccine injectable polio administered as injection oral polio administered orally complete dose is needed for satisfactory effect in injectable polio whereas oral polio 1 to 
doses will give the satisfactory effect injectable polio stimulates systemic antibody response whereas oral polio vaccine stimulates local immunity in gut the next question is dry heat and moist heat sterilization what is the difference so from the word itself we all know that it is using a dry heat whereas moist heat sterilization uses a moist heat dry heat uses high temperature in dry condition whereas moist heat uses high temperature and pressure generalized by or generated by steam the examples of dry heat sterilization is flaming incineration and hot air oven whereas moist heat sterilization examples are boiling pasteurization the most effective method in dry heat is hot air oven whereas moist heat sterilization the most effective method is autoclave more time is taken for sterilization in dry heat method whereas in moist heat method very less time is taken for sterilization the next frequently asked question is difference between sterilization and disinfection it is the process of complete destruction of harmful microbes so what is sterilization complete destruction of all the microbes whereas disinfection is a process of killing or removal of organism that are capable of causing infection so it specifically kills only infectious bacteria spores are killed in sterilization method whereas in disinfection spores are not killed different kind of methods are used together in sterilization whereas only chemical method is used for sterilization in disinfection sterilization complete cleaning is done in sterilization whereas disinfection cleans only a required amount of cleaning uh, st- in ster- examples of sterilization is fertil- filtration autoclave and dry heat method whereas in disinfection the example is da- phenol and chloroxynol so we are finishing with this dis- differentiate between questions and we'll see you in the next video thank you